What exactly is the difference between a Ukrainian refugee and an Iraqi refugee and an Afghani refugee, a refugee from Africa? There should be no difference. Brothers and sisters, in 2015, Europe's leaders screamed about a migrant crisis as 1.4 million refugees fled the war in Syria. We were told we couldn't take them, we didn't have enough room, yet those same countries absorbed 2 million Ukrainians within days just over a year ago. There was no rubber dinghies, there was free tickets on the Eurostars, and we should ask the question, the question that Gary Lineker the question that others have asked, what exactly is the difference between a Ukrainian refugee, an Iraqi refugee, an Afghani refugee, a refugee from Africa? There should be no difference. We now know that Europe never had a migrant crisis. It had a racism crisis. And if you really want to root out racism, then dismantle the brutal regime of detention centers, dismantle the brutal regime of deportation, deal with the killer cops who act with immunity, and deal with our politicians who are knee deep in the blood of thousands drowned by Europe's border controls. We need, as a movement, to harness the spirit of Kenyo Street. Those moments, those moments when the community came together and said that these are our neighbors, let them go. That power of the people rests in every community, in every town, in every city. We have a society in crisis where politicians glorify obscene wealth, propagating racism and conspiracy theories whilst they claim to stand up for ordinary people. They are nothing more than racist thugs who are patently out for the super rich. The government will try and use racism to divide us and to break our movement, to say that if the NHS is on its knees, if you can't get a house, if you can't afford to pay your bills, blame migrants, blame illegals. But we are absolutely crystal clear in saying the unions stand against racism, and we will unite black, white, Asian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Christian, atheist, all of us to say racism will not divide us. We remember the might of the Black Lives Matter movement. We are at the continuation of that movement. We never went away. We demand justice for refugees and justice for Sheku Bayo and all the victims of institutional racism, of police brutality and racism. being part of the fight for justice for Sheku, standing together outside the inquest into his death and saying we demand the truth, we demand justice, because if they get away with this and they've got away with so many deaths of black people in police custody before, then they will do it again. We cannot let that happen. We say enough is enough. We need to continue to support justice for the Sheku Bayou campaign, which is what Of Trump. We witnessed the election of Lula. 
and see your folks in autumn. Look at the example of Ken in your street and how our community stood up and united to send off the Home Office and they won. are on their way to Britain. Britain takes less than 1% of the world's refugees. Most of the world's refugees remain in the region of conflict. And through illegal wars, this country, this country alone, is responsible for creating 37 million of the world's refugees. And if she is so bothered about 45,000 refugees crossing here in small boats, why does she not complain about the 150,000 Hong Kong residents who they let in since 2020? Why don't they complain about the 234,000 visas that they issued to Ukrainian war refugees? The UK government complains that people come here in small boats and, and that they should stay in the first safe country that they arrive in. Well, over the past year, our charity has helped hundreds of Ukrainian unaccompanied minors, families, children, young people to come and resettle in Britain. They travelled here, not direct from Ukraine. They travelled via Poland, via Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Sweden, and even Switzerland. That's how they got here. These are all safe countries, but no one complains about that. Even the cats and dogs of Ukrainians can get safe routes to this country. We know that through the work that we do. But the children and babies of Afghans and Syrians and Eritreans are left to simply drown, reduced, dehumanized to a statistic. As Indian students um, in the UK, we are often subjected to all world racism. But it's equally important to speak to the history of colonial oppression that we have faced and to say how many such mechanisms continue to exist within our universities that perpetuate a process of colonial knowledge production. We are refused to uh, refuse the same access of scholarships and means to fund our education. We are refused to access or we are refused access to affordable housing. And when many of us fall through the gaps in the system that was put in place by the empire, we are criminalized and made to feel that we ought to be grateful for the crumbs and scraps thrown away.